2022 has seen us launch in to senior schooling at Good Samaritan Catholic College. And for us, this is an exciting new stage with opportunities for all of our senior students. And for us at the college, it's a key focus of our work in 2022. In our senior school, and at Good Samaritan, we talk about senior school being year 10 and beyond. We aim to engage all of our students in meaningful pathways for success, both in their senior years of learning and beyond school. One of the great things about our college is that our staff are experts in the field. We are so, so blessed and lucky to have highly qualified teachers who are exemplary teacher leaders and they're working right now on forming a comprehensive and diverse, brilliant range of senior courses for our students. At the same time as them doing their work in creating all these wonderful courses, we're working on strong connections with skilled businesses in our local community, with obviously different TAFE pathways, with Vocational Learning Institute, and with the university sector. These are key focus areas for us this year, and they've been for some time now, and we're really looking to strengthen those ties and work diligently in that field. So in 2023, much like right now with all of the elective opportunities in 2022 for our Year 10 students, our college will offer a wide range of senior courses. But our aim is to propel students to great success, be that straight away into the workforce, in school-based traineeships and apprenticeships, or in pursuing vocational learning so that beyond school, students can continue to learn in a trade field or in other fields, or quality tertiary pathways being explored. So students really pursuing that ATAR pathway as well and looking for direct entry to university. One of the great things with our college, we offer students and parents accurate and appropriate advice on making really strong choices that maximize student opportunity in the senior school and beyond. We're not here to give you blanket advice. It's not what we do. We have experts in the field, people in leadership who have led senior schooling for a long time in the past and they know what makes a good pathway and they know the pitfalls that we can fall into. And we are here to give you those, that advice as we move forward. So it's important for us to take some time to recognize who are the senior school learning and teaching leaders? Well, to start with, in our college, Mr. Myers, our principal, is the leader of learning and teaching. He oversees everything that we do. And he works really closely with me, Mr. Elvie, in leading the learning and teaching practices from prep to year 12 at our college. Both Greg and I are really, really experienced in leading big schools that offer such a diverse, wide range of subject opportunities, of learning opportunities, of pathway opportunities for our students. But most importantly, what we look for is excellence in our field. So it doesn't matter where our students are headed, we want to provide them excellent opportunity. Now I'm humbly assisted by, by Matthew Rattray, who's our assistant principal in year seven to 12. And Matt brings a wealth of experience with him, both in the vocational field and down that ATAR pathway as well. Mrs. Mills has great experience, particularly in that area of leading the religious education and that side of things in the college, and I will talk more later around how we'll approach that as we move forward. And then we move to our college learning leaders. So Mrs. Willis is our careers and vocational learning leader at the college. Paula has great skills in setting up and developing careers pathways and vocational learning for our students. And so we really lean on her specialisation for those students, particularly who are headed in to a transition to work pathway or in the vocational learning area. And that includes our school-based traineeships and apprenticeships. But then we have all of our other learning leaders. So Mrs. Gilbert with her extensive experience in English, humanities and languages. 
Mrs. Mab in mathematics and, and, and digital technologies. And Mrs. Mab's been a leader of an expert teacher group around senior schooling. Mr. Hose, who's worked extensively in the science field and in maths actually with QCAA and Mrs. Piper similarly down that arts field. They are both highly experienced in those fields. Mrs. Woods has extensive experience from her previous schools where she's led students down both vocational and ATAR learning in the health and physical education fields. Mr. Gardner again, again brings a wealth of experience both down the ATAR pathway but particularly in the vocational learning pathway around building construction and all those different types of technologies, not to mention graphics, engineering and everything down there. And we really lean on our pastoral leader, Mrs. Woods, to use her experience in guiding students in making smart decisions. So at Good Samaritan, when we talk about senior school pathways, we talk about different options that students can pursue in senior schooling. The first pathway we're exploring is the traineeship and apprenticeship pathway. Students pursuing this pathway tend to be looking for opportunities that include a traineeship or apprenticeship as a key part of their learning journey. We're looking for students on this pathway to engage in a quality traineeship or apprenticeship. Something that takes them further into a meaningful career. We want to negotiate this with you because this ultimately tends to be a school-based program. We want students to experience success in their schooling and in their traineeship and apprenticeship. The second pathway is quality vocational learning. This can happen at the college and beyond the college. We work with students so they build industry skills in a particular field. This can lead them to further places. It can lead them to work. It can lead them to further vocational learning or it can lead them to even university. And our third pathway is our further tertiary learning pathway for those students particularly looking for direct entry to university from school. We're looking to provide our students with optimum opportunities to access the courses and pathways they're looking to pursue in their later lives. But the beautiful thing about our pathways approach to senior schooling is that it's not one or the other, but it can be combinations of pathways that lead them to their post-school lives. So there are clear linkages between further tertiary learning and vocational learning. Students can, for example, choose general subjects to study in the further tertiary learning pathway and study certificates at the same time. And similarly, in fact, probably, students doing the traineeship and apprenticeship pathway will undertake quality vocational learning at the college as well and achieve those certificates at the college at the same time as their apprenticeship. This Pathways Foundation is what the college is building on and we're exploring these pathways with our Year 10 students as they head to Year 11 and 12. And we'll start with our further tertiary learning pathway, sometimes known as the ATAR pathway. Students undertaking this further tertiary learning pathway are looking for direct entry to university and that includes the Australian Defence Force Academy down there in Canberra where some students have already expressed some interest. An ATAR is generally calculated by identifying a student's highest ranking five QCAA general subjects or it can be four QCAA general subjects and their highest ranking applied subject or it can also be four of their QCAA general subjects and a VET certificate three or a higher qualification. All of these different opportunities can contribute to students' ATAR 
calculation for direct entry to university. Now, I've said some words in here that are cause for you to probably do some, some more exploration. So I urge you, if you want to know more about what's a general subject, what's an applied subject, what does it mean to have a VET uh, certificate three, I, I urge you to start doing some Googling around that because we're at the phase now where we want you to start, I guess, investigating things with your sons and daughters to have these quality discussions there at home. Students seeking an ATAR are generally advised to select subjects they perform well in, that meet their pathway ambitions and that they are committed to. It's no point saying, oh, but I wanna be a this and having no background where you've performed well in that subject before or where you've got a, a distinct interest in that subject. That's not going to work. So the reason we have our, all of our elective opportunities now for our students is so they can make discerning choices around where am I headed, what am I loving, what am I performing well in. I must tell you one of the big differences between what used to happen in senior schooling in Queensland and now what happens is the ATAR is heavily dependent on senior external examinations and their performance and the students' performance on internal assessments. That will constitute the student's achievement in their subjects. So they will do external exams when they're pursuing an ATAR. They will do internal assessments that are sent away, moderated and judged as to whether they're performing at the same level as other students in the state. At a different point in time, not right now, we'll examine how ATARs are calculated in greater depth. The second area I want to talk about today is our vocational learning pathway. Students who are undertaking this pathway, they're wanting to build skills at school, school that lead to a trade and or employment in different industries. But it's not just employment, it's skilled employment. It's building those industry skills that allow them the opportunity to either complete some further study and further, those, further build those skills for industry um, engagement and then employment in an industry, or to take the skills they build here at school or at another institute and move directly from school into employment. So yes, vocational learning will provide students with industry skills that are attractive to employers. Now, as I said before, the certificates that students attain can contribute, at least one can contribute to an ATAR calculation if the student is looking to go directly to university. They can also contribute to university entry through different channels. I can tell you from my own personal experience, not mine personally, but one of my family members has gone to university, having gone down a vocational learning pathway and has entered into a high level course at university through certificate learning and other areas. Our final pathway to unpack is our traineeship and apprenticeship pathway. This pathway is centered around school-based apprenticeships and traineeships. These are generally called SATs and you'll learn more about them if your son or daughter is looking to engage in this pathway. Students in this pathway are looking for training with a recognized and invested employer. We don't want them engaging in training that's mediocre or not leading them to meaningful places. We want them to be with a recognized and invested employer who has their interests at heart. The students on this pathway will still be completing some studies, in fact, most of their studies at the college. So we want all school-based apprenticeships and traineeships to be fully negotiated in a coming together of the college and the employer working in the best interests of the student. It's simply not good enough for the employer to say, come on in and I'll sign you up to this school-based apprenticeship or traineeship and just get the school to sign off. It comes down to what does this mean 
for your son or daughter long term. There are implications for signing up to these arrangements and the college wants to give you and your son and daughter the best advice so that they can be successful. And so with this comes the question of work experience. I'd like to share with you my work experience reflection and I'm sure you can think about your own as well. My work experience reflection, I went to the Civil Air Training Academy. And uh, as your head of college here at the college, I wonder how useful that was to me at the time. You see, when we're adolescents, I really wonder how many of us are sure of what it is we want to do. How many of us are committed to a defined profession or trade, 100% to pursue it for life. Now, some students know what they want to pursue and they know that now. And they're seeking traineeships and apprenticeships now in those fields. But many, many just don't know. So, at this point, we want to target the students at different points through their senior schooling to offer them work experience at the optimum time for them when they've started to cement decisions about where they're heading and where they want to pursue. When they're ready to pursue a definitive industry, we will target them with work experience. So for those who are seeking school-based apprenticeships and traineeships now, we'll target them first. But we need to understand there are protocols around work experience. As a college, we maintain the responsibility to ensure that students are safe in a workplace, undertaking safe training and safe learning. So we have to conduct stringent audits, multiple site visits, and work with providers really closely to ensure student safety at all levels at all times. And folks, the dynamic around work experience has really changed. And we want to be sure that we're working with the students who are assured about their pathway and where they're headed at the right time. One of the big questions that's coming up is what subjects will Good Samaritan offer? And I would love to sit here today and tell you precisely the suite of subjects we would offer. It would make my job very, very easy right now. The bad news is I can't, but what I can assure you of is that our offering of subjects will be broad. It can be anything. We have a suite of expert teachers. We are so lucky to have the skills in our teaching staff right now to offer so many, so many different subjects. And I'm, I'm actually willing to start, say quite unequivocally that our subject offerings will be top notch and you can compare them with any school on the coast. I'll, tell, I'll say that to you right now and you'll be very proud of what we offer. So we do have that very highly experienced, highly qualified expert teaching group who are looking at this and examining this right now to offer a very, very broad array of subjects. But we're committed to this, that all of our subjects will A, be high quality and B, lead students to success in their pathways. It's a reality that some of us have perceptions about what students need to do to be successful, but sometimes those perceptions aren't necessarily accurate. I used to have discussions with students and parents who were pursuing, for example, the, uh, the pathway of, I want to be a, an HBE teacher. And they said, oh, I've got to do PE in high school. I've got to do it all through my senior years. Well, actually they didn't. The prerequisites for a PE teacher were to have some understanding of English, maths, biology, chemistry. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the experience we have here can lead us to better understand what's going to lead them to success either at university, at TAFE or in the workplace. So for us, this is what it will look like. We will have a broad offering of QCAA general subjects. We'll have some offering of applied subjects. I can see us having an array of vocational certificates and in some cases, 
we might engage mentoring students on some online learning. It is an opportunity for us at our college to have some students who might be passionate about a subject that, that only has one or two students who want to do it. And it's therefore not going to run directly at the college. We can still mentor them through online learning. We can still have one of our expert teachers here who's a specialist in that field, but the class isn't running, mentor them through online learning. And so I'm listing here many of the different areas that all of those different courses and subjects can and probably will cover. But we will ensure that our range of courses, whatever it is for your sons and daughters, will be strategized for them. Their selections will guide what we offer. And beyond that, we will help them with those selections so that they see success in their pathways. Now for our college, there are some basics here that have to be understood. If we're talking about success, one of the key measures of success for our students is whether they obtain a QCE or in a few individual circumstances, a QCIA. But for us, as we build forward, obtaining a Queensland Certificate of Education is the aim for every student at the college. As they leave the college, we want to be able to be sure that they have obtained their Queensland Certificate of Education or their Queensland Certificate of Individual Achievement. The QCE is internationally recognised as a qualification and it gives employers and institutes evidence that the student has achieved in their subjects and their courses and has achieved broadly in their senior school learning. It also is dependent on them achieving 20 credits through successful study in QCAA general courses and applied courses, through vocational learning and training courses, and through recognized courses. So there's a few different areas there where students can obtain some credits. Critically, students get credits through grades of C, or let's be better than that, better than a C, through obtaining competencies and qualifications in their certificate study, satisfactory completions and passes in approved courses, and here's a kicker, they have to pass literacy and numeracy courses to obtain their QCE. We'll have a greater discussion later around those couple of students. We'll have a targeted discussion with a few students who will be looking at a Queensland Certificate of Individual Achievement. So who is the QCE, the Queensland Certificate of Education? Who is it for? As I said before, our college will aim that every student attains their QCE at the completion of Year 12. Students on every pathway, whether it's a school-based traineeship or apprenticeship, whether it's vocational learning, whether it's straight to university down that tertiary pathway, we want them to obtain their QCE and we're going to monitor their progress, communicate with them, with you and with college mentors in an ongoing manner about their progress. So there's a nice graphic that summarizes what the students need to do to obtain their QCE. They have to get those 20 credits. Those 20 credits will come from a pattern of either five QCAA general courses or some applied courses or some certificate learning in, in there as well. They will have to achieve a standard to get those credits. And critically, they will have to meet literacy and numeracy requirements, which is why we've done all the hard work with your sons and daughters all the way through school to this point. Now, I wanna take some time to discuss with you how our senior students find success in their learning pathway. One of the critical changes in senior school is this. 
Firstly, I'll give it this, I guess, caveat. Parents, your sons and daughters are going to need you more than what they needed you when they were smaller. It's not gonna feel that way. They're probably gonna push you away, to be frankly honest, to some degree, but they will need you more. That said, we need to work together, our college and you as parents, to see them step up, to take responsibility for their learning and their achievement. That is what really good, high achieving students do. They personally take responsibility. With that comes study requirements, putting school first, recognizing that I'm coming towards the end and I want to achieve this because in my life I will. Those sorts of statements. So parents in the college provide strong support to the students at this time. Now achieving success is about a few factors. The first factor and maybe even the strongest factor is presence. They have to come to school as often as they can. And I mean, they should be not having very much time off school at all if they wanna be successful in their senior studies. And beyond that, holiday times change as well. Holiday times, while it's important for them to have a rest sometimes, also will be times when they can catch up on study, when they can take further steps, it's again them taking that responsibility. So presence is critical. Effort is an obvious one. They need to put in themselves. The you and me of this world can guide them all they want, but if they don't come to the party, they aren't going to achieve the success they could. Inquiry, they need to want to know more. They need to explore deeper about what things mean and where they're headed. Organization. They need to be organized. They need to have a dedicated study space. They need to know when to put the phone down, to be frankly honest. They need to know, this is my study time I am committed to. And they need to go that extra mile in commitment. They need to push themselves to show what they can achieve. Success also comes from them making strong connections both at school and out in the community, taking opportunities when they arrive and by showing initiative. Because you and I both know things don't fall in our lap. We have to show great initiative to be successful in life. We have to back ourselves, take a risk, have a conversation with someone who can help. Right now, our year 10 students should engage deeply in their learning. Not just in their careers learning, but in their careers learning and in all of their subject learning. This is a critical formation time for them right now. They should be asking a lot of questions of their teachers. We would hope that if they're on a vocational learning pathway or a transition to work pathway, that they're starting to talk to people out there in industry, in business now. That they're starting, if they're looking to go to TAFE or to university, to explore, hang on, what does TAFE look like? What can it offer me? What can university offer me? And talk broadly across, not just to mum and dad and to us here at school, but in the community, have those good conversations. One of the critical factors is this, because all of us are gonna have some discussions later in the year about what your son or daughter should do moving forward. I have always found that the best indicator of future success in student senior learning pathways is their aptitude and effort that they demonstrate in year 10. They have to put in now. It's just how it is. We will be looking at their first semester year 10 data as a guide to give you and them, particularly them, the best advice of where they'll be successful in their senior schooling pursuits. So just to summarize, what a Good Samaritan Catholic College doing now? Well, we're out there now forming relationships with significant community and business partners, with different further learning institutes, TAFEs and universities, 
to provide those options to our students. In a few months time, we'll be having a Future Pathways exhibition for students and for you, their families, to meet with some of the institutions and some of the key pathways groups and some employers to ask questions and to discuss options for future learning. We have developed and implemented through Mrs Willis a fantastic careers program that's engaging students in understanding their senior school learning and examining future pathway options. We're already monitoring their achievement so that we can provide them with the best support but probably critically also the best advice when it comes time to select their pathway and their subjects moving forward. And probably the most important point. The college, our learning and teaching team, is working both with the leaders in the team and with the team of expert teachers we have to form high quality courses that provide all students to launch the opportunity to launch successfully into their future. It's such hard work, it's such rewarding work. We love what we're doing right now because we're bringing together so many experiences and so much detail around what we can offer our students. So I'm asking you today to, I guess, trust us, to take the time to understand what senior schooling's about, to know that you're in good hands, in really solid hands. I'm pretty confident you're in the most solid hands on the coast around what senior schooling can look like. So where to now? There's a few useful links on the screen for you to start exploring. I'll leave them up there for a short amount of time so you can take a look at them. There's some information there about the QCE and what it is, the Queensland Certificate of Education, and what the students need to do to obtain that. I've got a link there to our local university, to the Sunshine Coast University, or University of Sunshine Coast as it is, where you can start exploring all the courses they offer here on the coast, but I'm sure you can go further afield if you want to. If you want to start having a look at QUT, at UQ, at Griffith, at CQU, at James Cook, at all the different universities, get into Google and away you go. And finally, if you just want some broad-based information there on vocational learning, there's a great link there that talks about vocational learning, vocational education and training, and gives you a broad sweep of what can be on offer. Look, I really thank you for taking the time to listen and to watch this video. It's a really exciting journey we're on at the moment. I hope you get from me how confident we are of being able to offer the best opportunities for your sons and daughters to really experience success both in senior schooling and beyond school as they come to this key point in their lives as they start to embark on their adult future. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this informative.